Hello everyone and welcome back to JB Subtle Gaming. And I know it's, haven't had a lot of content lately, but we are going to get some more gaming content and maybe even some more board gaming miniature gaming content coming up in a little bit. But there's something that I wanted to get to that I, has really been bothering me a lot lately. It's been a while since I've done a JB Subtle Rant video, and this video is going to be about some things going on in video gaming reviewing right now. And while I'm a small channel, I don't get review codes. Uh, I have reviewed one game that I was given by a developer. I've had a few other offers. Uh, this was the only one that I, I thought really suited me and was worth checking out. But in general, I don't get codes for games. So this some of this stuff doesn't affect me, some of this does. But the goal of this channel is that I love gaming. I want to provide information about gaming for people, whether that be board gaming or video gaming content, stuff you might not find about, out about otherwise. And reviews really should be, in my opinion, about being consumer friendly, trying to tell people what's worth spending their money on. And good review places do that. There are places, and there's been a lot of industry issues going on, people being paid for reviews, people being whitelisted for giving good reviews, so getting more content, people being sent out uh, to press events and things like this, and, well, people being blacklisted, they don't like a game, so therefore they don't get any more review codes from a company. Just silly, stupid things. And this has been going on for a while, but there have been some events over the last few months that are really kind of changing things up, and I really think may just really not consumer-friendly things, and I want to talk to you about some of these things that have happened. So a little while back, Bethesda changed its review policy, where when they give games out to reviewers, basically they're not going to give reviewers early copies of games anymore. Now, they made the argument that, oh, we don't want people, the average consumer, to feel left out, and we want everyone to have the opportunity to play the game at the same time. Um, what? Basically, this argument is completely idiotic. We have reviews before a movie comes out so we can decide on opening day if a movie is worth seeing. And games rely on opening weekend sales, opening week sales. A lot of games, that is when they make the overwhelming majority of their money. And while there are games that end up with a long tail, that maybe don't have a very successful release, that end up becoming successful later on, like Rainbow Six Siege, that's usually not the norm. A game can be a flop after opening week, but if they've built up enough hype for the game, then that game can succeed just on those opening week sales if they're big enough. This is what companies want to do. So if we don't have reviews out before a game comes out, then people have to make an uninformed decision in what most cases with Bethesda, we're talking about a $60 purchase, which is something that I know I personally can't throw around $60 all the time. That's a big deal to me, so I want to make an informed decision. And I'm someone who, in general, doesn't pre-order games. I'm not 100% against it. There are cases where I feel like it's okay. I played two of the Overwatch betas. I was familiar with the game. I pre-ordered that because I knew what the game was before I got it. But in general, I do think pre-ordering is a bad idea. And I feel like early reviews let us make informed decisions about games. And if we end up buying an opening weekend, great, but we can't be in the mindset that we have to do that. The zeitgeist or whatever you want to call it, where people feel like they need to get into a game, the companies want this because they want to sell that game whether it's good or bad. And Bethesda has their arguments as to why they think this is a good idea. It's not. It's terrible. Because here's the deal. If there are people who don't like the game, then that's going to hurt hype. If people do like the game, that may help it a little bit, but there are better odds of reviewers not liking a game hurting the hype than already helping it, because most of the hype is coming from trailers and all these things. And trailers nowadays, a lot of them are just pre-rendered stuff. They have very little to do with the actual gameplay. Because the point isn't to help you determine if the game is good or bad, it's to generate hype. Uh, should we talk about No Man's Sky? There's a whole discussion we could have about that. But that, in a way, was a successful game, even though, in general, people hate that game. There are people that like it, and there are some good things about the game, but in general, it was a huge disappointment, but it still sold a lot because of the hype. And Bethesda's policy is just another way of controlling that hype, controlling the signal, if you will, because if you can't get full-fledged reviews out there and only the content that Bethesda wants you to see when the game comes out, a lot of people aren't going to wait in order to get reviews. And then the other issue you're running into is if reviewers, let's say there's an embargo and they can't release a review until the game releases. I'm even okay with that, but at least it's there right away. But if reviewers can't even get the game until it releases, now you're going to get inaccurate reviews because because people feel like they have to rush through the game because if you're a big YouTube channel, being 
first is more important than being good in a lot of instances. If you get out there before a lot of other reviews are out there, then your review is going to get seen. So people are going to be hurrying through the game, giving rushed opinions about games that they don't spend the time testing different AIs, going through different things. Basically, you're going to get inadequate reviews from people who are going to want to make money. And I think this is a terrible policy. And this is just one way that gaming companies have been trying to control the signal out there. Another company that's been doing this for a long time is Nintendo. Now I'm speaking specifically about Nintendo of Japan. So I'm going to take you to my YouTube channel here and this my uh, editor's page or whatever and I want to show you this includes copyrighted content. So I did a video on the Nintendo Switch where I talked about the press conference and some reasons why I thought the Nintendo Switch might not be all that successful long term based on some of the decisions that they've made. In the background I showed footage of the press conference. There was no audio at the press conference. The entire video was me talking over it because I wanted to give you something interesting to look at while I'm doing the video. Well, before the video even got posted, while it was loading up, it got tagged because and you can, uh, Angry Joe's done some content on this. There's a lot of people who have talked about this. Nintendo claims everything. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole complicated issue of fair use and whether or not a video that is review, it is original content, um, should be allowed on YouTube. The answer, in my opinion, is yes, according to U.S. law. But the thing is, is we're kind of tentative about taking this issue to court because of the whole thing with precedent, and we don't really have a precedent. The way I understand fair use in the United States uh, and in other countries that have this concept is that if you're doing something that is original content and you're not just scamming, you know, if you're just playing a movie and talking over it every once in a while, okay, that's not really fair use. You're not creating original content. You're just displaying a copyrighted movie. But if you have some snippets of gameplay or this or that in a review, like you would expect, just like you can have snippets of a movie in a review, then you're creating the content. You're not showing the whole product itself and then claiming it as your own, you are making your own content and then providing examples. And that should be okay, but it isn't okay. Now I do want to point out that it's Nintendo of Japan, not Nintendo of America. Basically Nintendo of Japan doesn't get YouTube. They don't get that this can actually help you, they can generate hype. Instead, they're trying to control the message. You do have a service that if you want to cover Nintendo games, you're welcome to do it, as long as you sign up with them and give them a ridiculous cut of your advertising, or you can just sign up with them and all of your channel um, is basically owned by Nintendo, and they take a smaller cut, but all of your videos belong to them, basically, even though they're yours, but they get the money first and then give you a portion of it. And, well, it's insane, and it's... Okay, according to YouTube policies, because YouTube has to protect themselves against the big companies who are more of a threat if they sue them than just an individual user. So it makes sense why YouTube is kind of having to do this until there is like an exact law, until fair use is really applied to YouTube. But until that happens, you're going to have this issue where if you show anything, have any audio, and we're talking little snippets, Nintendo is just going to claim it unless you basically work with them, but if you're working with them, then they have to control over your content to a degree, and obviously not going to want you to put up overly critical content. So again, not only are they controlling the message, but they're trying to control the money. You are making original content, and if you're a big enough channel to make money off of advertising, you're giving a cut of that to Nintendo, even though you're creating the product in a review or whatever content it is that happens to be talking about their product. And well, it's ridiculous. It's yet another company trying to control the content. And here's another thing I want to point out. This has been going on even with gamers controlling the content for these big companies. I would take you to Jim Sterling's channel, the Jimquisition, except I'm not sure if I can right now because it's been under DDoS attack for quite some time because Jim Sterling had the audacity of giving Zelda Breath of the Wild a 7 out of 10 and saying he really liked the game. What he did is he pointed out that the game had a few flaws. It had things like a weapon degradation system and stamina system that um, is at best controversial because some people didn't like it and at worst some people absolutely despise it. It has major performance issues. Jim Sterling simply pointed out that yes this is a great game but it does have some issues and all of that's true and he received death threats and DDoS attacks and all of this for saying hey this game is really great but here's some issues that 
be, again, being consumer friendly, if this doesn't bother you, great. Then maybe it is a 10 out of 10. But if these things do bother you, including performance issues, which should almost objectively hurt something, well, there are these issues. And you may be annoyed by your weapons breaking you know, very consistently that you don't have very much stamina at the start of the game. There are issues with the game that some people can see past, and that's fine. But Breath of the Wild isn't a perfect game. Here's the deal. My son has it. I haven't really played it. But as far as everything that I've been able to gather up, it is a fantastic game. But it isn't perfect. It doesn't deserve 10 out of 10s across the board. I'm okay with the reviewer giving it a 10 out of 10, but the praise it's getting is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> and, well... Now we have somebody saying that, hey, yeah, this game has some issues. It's really good, though, 7 out of 10. And we have this whole issue with scores in video gaming where a lot of places, basically a 5 is equal to a 1 and it goes up from there, but that's not how Jim Sterling reviews. A 7 out of 10 is 5 is an average. That's well above average. It's a very good game. But people are controlling the message as consumers. These individuals that are just a number to these companies, that are just a potential sale, are attacking Jim Sterling's site, which he doesn't have advertising on, so you're not hurting him financially, but and attacking him personally for saying he liked a game that you happen to like more. Um, excuse me, I have to let a cat out. Um, <laughs> It's insane, and not only is it corporations that are controlling the signal, but it's individuals, it's fanboys, it's people, and it's not all of Nintendo's fanboy uh, fan base. It's not fanboys fan base. It's not everyone who's a fan of Zelda, but there is a select and surprisingly large group of people that are genuinely furious about him saying he liked the game, but it had a few issues, and the game has a few issues. So I am going to uh, point this out, and this is something that Total Biscuit actually talked about on uh, their co-optional podcast, and I want to point it out too because I thought it was a really good point. You are not the things that you enjoy. If you like something so much that it begins to define your identity, this is is an issue. To paraphrase Fight Club, you are not your effing khakis. <laughs> that th when the things that you like start becoming your identity, and I get how this can happen. You can like something so much that when somebody attacks it, or even just points out it has some issues, you feel attacked personally. If you are feeling that way, you need to think about that. You need to think about yourself if you're that vulnerable to being hurt by somebody not liking something that you liked, or even not just liking it quite as much. In my opinion, from everything that I've been able to gather, Zelda isn't a 10 out of 10 game. It has some issues, but it's still a great game, and that's okay. And if you want to give it out a 10 out of 10, that's okay. But don't do the job of these corporations and try to control the signal and say, a 7 out of 10, are you crazy? You should die. It is insane. It's insane when companies try to do it, but they're at least doing it for profit. While an individual would do it to a reviewer, I don't get it. If you want to get mad at people for, you know, taking money and not disclosing it and things like that, get mad about that. If you want to get mad at a reviewer for not liking the game as much as you, then you need to consider how you're defining yourself and what's important to you. And if you love the game, good for you. But the point of a review is to give content to people to give them a better idea of something is worthwhile and that's what i try to do here and i do try to do little interesting bits where i compare different games or have little thoughts like this as well now i do want to point out if you thought this was interesting or any of my other content was interesting please do um like if you didn't like it dislike please leave comments please share and subscribe and i want to point out how big of a difference this really does make as a little channel i'd love to be able to get review copies and things like that and provide more games for you guys but I can't do that on a limited budget but I do want to show up as I have this page up point out the difference in what can happen when a video gets noticed so a lot of my videos here too 10 uh, the switch one at 65 views 14 7 26 all of a sudden we've got 1500 and 2800 what is the difference well these videos got noticed we have 25 likes here 34 likes here as opposed to you know one and two or, or zero likes or things like that when the way you YouTube works when people notice a video and they give it likes, they give it comments and things like that. These videos also have quite a few, or, you know, six comments thir or, or 38 comments on my Elite Dangerous video. Um, then it shows up more in searches and, well, 
it really helps out the channel. And this is a really good example of how much going from, you know, less than 20 views to over a thousand or over 2000, because a few people notice something and that helps it show up in searches and things like that. So I do appreciate that. And we'll be back with more content soon. I uh, found some really cool card games lately. And again, try to provide that feedback to you guys to try to show you some cool stuff because I love gaming and I want to spread the word and try to be as consumer friendly as possible. And if you appreciate that, then please uh, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again soon.